Welcome and thank you for joining us. My name is Mark Daniels. Today we celebrate a special day in the history of the University of Central Florida. There are many people that have helped create these opportunities that stand before us to give our student athletes a chance to compete at the highest level on their playing fields and continue to shine in classrooms. To the many past presidents, administrators, athletic leaders, coaches, and hundreds of thousands of UCF fans across the country and world, we say thank you. The Knights are about to embark on a new journey to showcase our brand to our new partners, our new rivals, and compete at the highest level of collegiate sports. To our newest friends, we're excited to stand with you, and we cannot wait to, uh, wait to welcome you to our city in the coming years ahead. Today, we are honored to have some of the individuals who have played a significant role in why we are here today. Joining us via Zoom, Alex Martins, UCF Board of Trustees Chair, Bob Bowlesby, Commissioner of the Big 12, Dr. Lawrence Gubinick, President, Texas Tech and Chair of the Big 12 Board. In attendance with us, Dr. Alexander Cartwright, President of the University of Central Florida, and Terry Mahajer, Vice President and Director of Athletics at UCF. Each individual will have a chance to share some comments. Uh, first, please welcome Alex Martins, the UCF Board of Trustees Chair. Well, thank you, Mark, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are happy to announce uh, that just moments ago, uh, the Board of Trustees of the University of Central Florida unanimously uh, voted to accept the Big 12's invitation to join the conference. Uh, it was a very historic vote that all of our trustees uh, were very excited about, uh, very confident about, and uh, really uh, signified uh, a significant day in the history of the University of Central Florida. Uh, the board also uh, approved an amendment to an internal line of credit uh, between the UCF Foundation and the UCF Athletics Association uh, in order to help fund our entry into the Big 12 Conference as well as uh, our exit uh, from the American Athletic Conference. Uh, so on behalf of the Board of Trustees at the University of Central Florida, uh, we'd like to thank Commissioner Bob Bolsby for his confidence uh, in our institution and in our athletics program, as well as the presidents and the chancellors uh, of the Big 12, uh, who unanimously uh, uh, invited uh, the University of Central Florida uh, earlier today uh, to become members. We're extremely excited about it. And uh, again, we thank uh, everyone involved, including uh, our own President Alex Cartwright, and our Vice President and Director of Athletics, Terry Mahajer, who have worked tirelessly over the course of the last 10 days or so uh, to make this day happen, uh, along with the leaders of the Big 12 Conference. Uh, so Mark, we're extremely excited uh, that our board was able to take this action today, and we look forward uh, to welcoming all of our, our, our members of the Big 12, as well as, as you say, our new rivals, uh, to the Valence House and to all of our athletic facilities uh, in Orlando and Central Florida. Alex, thank you. Next up, President of the University of Central Florida, Dr. Alexander Cartwright. Thank you, Mark. Today certainly is a big day for UCF and Night Nation. As we strive to become one of the world's leading metropolitan research universities, we know our achievements in our classrooms and laboratories and in our community are enhanced by our national recognition in athletic competition. And this invitation will only strengthen that relationship. We are a young, energetic, entrepreneurial, and bold institution with a culture of compassion that is focused on building a better future for society. Since our first classes only 53 years ago. UCF, we all love, has been built by people who are willing to challenge the status quo and who believed if there's a better way, we should do it. This invitation to the Big 12 is a testament to our collective achievements and the outstanding accomplishments of our student athletes and our coaches over many years as we built our athletic program. We are here today because of the hard work, years of hard work and advocacy of so many people. Our current and former university trustees, current and former university leaders, elected officials, generous donors, passionate alumni and fans, 
and dedicated faculty and staff have all helped to build the foundation of excellence that now supports our bold new future. We have benefited from being in Central Florida by being embraced as Orlando's hometown team and being, in a, being a part of a community that believes in magic and knows we can accomplish anything when we work together. I would like to thank Commissioner Bob Bowlesby and the Big 12 Chancellors and Presidents for their vote of confidence and we look forward to working with them to prepare for our membership. We also look forward to continuing to compete for championships in the American Athletic Association. And I would like to thank Commissioner Mike Oresco and the leaders of our fellow AAC institutions for all they have done to strengthen the conference. Our relationship with the AAC has been an exciting experience for the university's intercollegiate athletics program. Finally, I want to personally thank our board chair, Alex Martins, for his leadership and wise counsel. UCF and Knight Nation are grateful to you, Alex, and the entire Board of Trustees for your commitment to our focus on excellence in everything that we do as an institution. Education, research, engagement, and of course, athletics. Go Knights and charge on. Next up, please welcome Vice President of Director of Athletics, Terry Mahajer. <laughs> What's wrong with everybody? Come on! Fantastic. Uh, well, I'd just like to thank the media first for keeping this such a secret. Thank you for your, all your hard work and not uh, trying to uh, get the scoop. So thank you. Um, so, uh, man, this is, a, this is a landmark day for anyone ever associated with UCF and UCF athletics. As we anticipate a future to move to the Big 12, we first owe a vote of thanks to all those at UCF who've gone before us. A long list of student athletes, coaches, ADs, university presidents, support staff, alumni, donors, fans, and of course the student body. Plus so many others who, whose hard work and successes have helped pave the way for today's announcement and we have several of those coaches in the room today and I appreciate them showing up today so thank you. Well let's face it folks the bases were already loaded when I got here and I feel very blessed and honored to be able to get to step up to the plate today on behalf of UCF Athletics. It's also appropriate to express our appreciation to the American Athletic Conference as proud members since 2013 our teams have won 32 AAC championships in a wide variety of sports. We will continue to proudly represent the AAC during the transition. I speak for all of us at UCF Athletics in expressing our excitement for the opportunities that lie ahead, and I'm confident our night teams will rise to the challenges to come. Right, coaches? Okay, yeah, they're shaking their heads. Yeah, they're shaking their heads. Because here at UCF, we're in the business of providing the best possible opportunities for our student athletes to thrive while they're here and have post-collegiate career success. We are convinced that competing as a member of the Big 12 Conference absolutely will help us accomplish our resource goals. It's impossible to truly understand UCF athletics without appreciation of the youth of our institution and in the manner in which our athletics program has overachieved. The ways in which our athletic fortunes have exploded over comparatively a short period of time is the reason why we believe that UCF is the future of college athletics. I'd like to just list off a couple did you knows for our new friends in the Big 12. So, in 1963, UCF was founded. In 1968, 1968 was the first time we held a class here. 1970 was the first time, 1970 was the first time we had an athletics event here and it was a men's basketball game. Nine years later, in 1979, UCF played football for the very first time. After playing football at the Division III, Division II, and the FCS level, 
UCF moved into the FBS level in 1996. So in 1996, we moved into the FBS level. So if you do the math, you'll see that UCF has been playing FBS football for only 25 years. Imagine where UCF's football program will be after 50 years. Think about it. And here's another way to measure how far we've come. Our football team has won 42 of the last 50 games. And the only teams that have won more games has, has been Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Notre Dame. See, that was easy. I didn't have to look at my notes. I only have, there's only four. <laughs> so uh, that's an impressive group of people. Meanwhile, we'll be entering a new conference where some of the teams have been playing since the 1800s. How about that? I remember, we started in 1996 at FBS level. So, in addition, Orlando is one of the most vibrant cities in the world. And as it relates to name, image, and likeness, or NIL, as you've heard, opportunities for our student athletes and potential student athletes here are endless compared to many college towns across the country. I am thrilled to say that we will be the flagship school for the Big 12 Conference in the state of Florida. <laughs> move, the Big 12 is planting a flag right here in the heart of the Sunshine State. So we thank them for doing that. Um, just a couple Big 12 tidbits. The Big 12 has been in existence for 25 years since it began in competition in 1996. It's kind of surreal for me because I actually worked at a member institution in the Big 12 when they first started the Big 12. So this is kind of full circle. 69 teams in the NCAA team, uh, 69 teams have won team titles and more than 700 individual national championships. The, the Big 12 had five team national championships in 2021 and five NCAA runner-up finishes and 17 individual national championships were, were added. The, the conference has claimed seven Heisman Trophy winners. So we are joining a fantastic conference, not only academically, but athletically, so excited. Last but not least, I want to thank our chairman of our board, Alex Martins. Thank you for your outstanding leadership and all, he's a very busy person and a uh, very busy person and the amount of meetings that he's taken over the last few weeks has been endless and making himself available has been uh, nothing but remarkable. And of course, our fearless leader, Dr. Alex Carrai. Yes, let's give it to Dr. Alex. He has j often joked with me when he's called me about, oh, we've probably talked 200 times in the last two weeks. At least. At least 200 times. He said, hello, Terry, this is your assistant AD. <laughs> so uh, he has been uh, nothing but remarkable and has really shepherded this whole thing and has been fearless during this process, and I appreciate it. I also want to thank the uh, Commissioner Bowlesby and the chancellors and presidents of the Big 12 for your vote and confidence and believing in who we are, and we will not let you down. So having said that, back to you. <laughs> back joining us uh, via Zoom, please welcome the president of Texas Tech and chair of the Big 12 board, Dr. Lawrence Gubinet. Good afternoon. Well, on behalf of my colleagues, the board of directors of the Big 12 Conference, I'm delighted to welcome the University of Central Florida to the Big 12 Conference. The Big 12 presidents and chancellors began this process of adding new members with a focus to strengthen the conference. The quality and success of athletic programs and the outstanding academic credentials of the University of Central Florida enhance the prestige and the competitiveness of the Big 12 on a national scale and sets us on a path to even greater success. A bigger, stronger, more national Big 12 is a great thing for college athletics. And certainly, having UCF as a conference member introduces us to a region that is rich in fans, students, and student athletes. I, I wouldn't characterize all presidents and chancellors as athletes, but we are by nature very competitive. And just as in athletics, 
we pay attention to a whole host of brain cancer. I have observed and admired the incredible growth in size and quality of the University of Central Florida. Recently, I had the chance to participate in meetings that included President Cartwright as part of a new consortium of Carnegie R1, or more com commonly called Tier 1, research universities that are also Hispanic serving institutions. There are 16 such universities in the United States. And now, with the addition of the University of Central Florida and the University of Houston, the Big 12 is home to three of those schools. This is but one example that speaks to a shared culture and values that enhance our athletic affiliations. I look forward to working with President Cartwright, and on behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Directors of the Big 12, we welcome the benefits of your experience and leadership. Each institution in the Big 12 also looks forward to welcome you to their campuses. And I and other members of the Red Raider family look forward to seeing you in Orlando. Again, welcome to the Big 12. That's up also joining us via Zoom. Please welcome the commander of the Big 12, Bob Bolsby. Uh, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time. And uh, uh, Alex Martins, thank you for uh, building a foreign trip around getting back in time to, uh, to vote and be on the Zoom with us. We appreciate it. Uh, this is a big day for us, and I know it is for you. Uh, we're adding four great schools, uh, 200,000 students in addition to those we already have, three additional states, 40 million additional people, um, three of the best recruiting areas in the U.S., including the state of Florida, of course. Um, tremendously successful broad-based programs that uh, compete up and down, side to side, throughout their programs on an individual basis. Uh, led by some really outstanding coaches and administrators. Uh, collectively, just to, to mention one sport, we spent uh, our new alignment in the Big 12, spent 68 weeks in the top 12, 25 last year, and 24 weeks in the top 10. So um, we are, we're eventually going to lose a couple of members that have competed well, but uh, our alignment is uh, top flight and can hang with, uh, with anybody that's out there. So indeed, it's a, it's a good day today for the Big 12, and uh, I, I'm sure it's a good day for uh, UCF as well. Uh, my research over the last uh, three or four weeks is, uh, has led me to learn that uh, UCF is one of the most innovative universities in the country. Uh, it's been recognized as such, and its uh, meteoric growth is, is testament to that. Um, it's obvious that that sort of innovation is present in the athletics program as well. It's a very young program, as Terry has said. Um, it has quickly become a national brand on the football field. Uh, Orlando is a progressive and vibrant city uh, in, a, in a great part of the country. The uh, state of Florida, of course, is one of the two best recruiting states for, for football players in, in the entire country. Um, but I mean, even the bounce house will, will get more bouncy and more vibrant uh, when we bring in new rivalries and uh, when we bring in some of the, some of the special opponents uh, that will be visiting your campuses. Uh, we're also very excited about being able to uh, utilize all that's available in Orlando uh, during, for some of our spring sports, and getting to, to warm weather plenty early. We, we don't usually fight with that too much, but we're always looking for places to host events and to uh, put together feature activities. Uh, this is also, on a personal level, an opportunity for me to uh, uh, reconnect with my dear friend and colleague, Johnny Dawkins. Uh, we were together at Stanford, and uh, he, uh, he joins a pretty salty basketball league, so I guess that uh, he's out getting his ankles taped right now. So he's going to have to dive in with some pretty fast company. Uh, we've been the, the number one RPI basketball league in the, in the country seven out of the last eight years. And so uh, he and I have already visited about the, uh, the challenges there, but uh, 
I, uh, I love Johnny and Tracy and, and uh, really uh, look forward to, to seeing more of them. Um, I, I want to thank President Cartwright and, uh, and Terry Mahajer and, and Board Chair Martins. I, uh, you've been very generous with your time. Uh, you have been very generous with your thoughts, uh, very interactive in, in asking questions and providing information. And I can't tell you how grateful I am. Uh, we are very proud to have Central Florida joining the Big 12. You, you will make uh, an immediate and long-lasting impact on the Big 12 conference. Uh, you'll, you'll do it uh, by the way you conduct yourselves. You'll do it by the way you compete. You'll do it by, uh, by the shared uh, privileges that we all have of, of shared academic credentials and shared academic accomplishments. And uh, I couldn't be any more excited to have your university uh, joining the Big 12 Conference. And uh, the, uh, the first day of competition for the Knights can't get here soon enough. So thank you very much for uh, your consideration. Thank you very much for the manner in which you've gone about this process. And uh, I look forward with uh, all appropriate enthusiasm to a, a long, long, and successful relationship. So. Uh, thanks very much. Bishop Bolsey, thank you. <laughs> we'll open up a, a, a question opportunity for both Commissioner Bolsby and uh, for President uh, uh, Skubanek. We ask a meeting to identify uh, your name and your affiliation, both those nationally and here in attendance. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. And Jason, go ahead. Jason B. with your Atlanta Sentinel. Commissioner Bolsby, you just mentioned you can't wait for you to see to start competing. What does that timeline look like? How early can you see after the rest of the schools uh, either the Come Commissioner, the question was about timeline for competition. Uh, uh, if you could address what that calendar might look like. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, the, in the case of BYU, they will be coming in on July 1st, 2023. And in the case of uh, UCF and Cincinnati uh, and uh, Houston, uh, they will be coming in not later than July 1st of 2024. So there is some flexibility uh, in, in, the, uh, in the first competition. But uh, at, at the present time, we don't, uh, we don't know the exact starting date for three of the four. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel, uh, Sentinel Commissioner. Uh, how confident are you that the Big 12 will be able to keep its Power 5 autonomous status, and what, what is the process for that? Well, the, the, um, the autonomy designation is, is a largely under, misunderstood uh, designation. It, it really only applies to our position in the governance uh, uh, system of the NCAA really doesn't have anything to do with college football playoff or with any sort of subdivisional component. It, it has to do with what, what uh, weighted voting we have. And, and I have every confidence that uh, we will continue to enjoy the status we've had before. Um, we've, we've added both numerically and we've added with high quality. And uh, I, I don't, you know, if, if there's, there's an organization, Mike, that's doing um, uh, you know, looking at the NCA Constitution, I suppose it's possible that the autonomy designation would go away for every for everybody. But I don't really think that's going to happen. In fact, if anything, I, I think we're probably moving in the direction of of the five autonomy conferences having having more to say about how the rules are constructed and managed rather than less. And I expect that we'll be a part of that. Next up, uh, Chris Benini from the Athletic. Chris, go ahead. Yes, uh, for Bob, um, obviously you're going to be up to at least 12 teams in the future here. Uh, is there any plans or, or discussions about splitting into divisions? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. It, it will likely vary by sport. Uh, obviously, we have been committed to playing a full, full round robin uh, in men's and women's basketball, a full double round robin uh, with, with either 12 or 14 for a period of time. Uh, we, we don't really have much choice but to uh, play in divisions. 
Uh, we also, in, this, in the case of basketball, we, we play a double round robin right now, but with even with 12, you can't play 24 league games, so or 22 league games. So we're uh, we're likely going to have to have some two plays. We'll have some one plays. Uh, we could even, uh, you know, have some no plays. We're, we, we really have been focused on the macro so far, and we'll have to dig into the micro the scheduling and, and some of the detail components as we go forward. But I, I think it is likely that, uh, that we will play divisions, in uh, at least in some sports. We also have the decision to make as to how many league games we're going to play uh, in the sport of football, and that one is likely to be one of the early decisions. Max Olson from the Athletic. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, hi, Bob. Uh, when you think ahead here to potentially uh, having you know all these members, you know, in the league potentially in, in 2023, do you think that Oklahoma and Texas will will still be in this conference at that time? And, and how do you sort of look at the possibility of a 14 team league in 23? Uh, well, four, 14 is no less manageable than. Um, than 12, so it, it isn't, from, from that standpoint, it's not particularly daunting. Um, OU and Texas have, have stated publicly that they intend to, to meet their obligations and stay through June 30th of, of, uh, of uh, 25, and, and we take them at their word. Um, if it turns out that that isn't the case, uh, we, we feel like we have uh, the, the necessary um, um, legal prerogatives to, uh, to to manage it as we see fit at the time that it occurs, but um, they've, they've both stated publicly they intend to, to meet the, the obligations of, of their grant of rights through June 30th, 2025, and until they demonstrate other advice, uh, we take them at their word. So thanks for the question, Max. Matt, go ahead. Bob, this is Matt Rochelle from the Orlando Sentinel. I want to ask, adding these four teams, how much does that impact maybe the future of the college football playoff and the top discussion of expansion? Well, as you know, I was I was on the subcommittee that uh, that looked at expansion. I I like the 12 team format. Um, I, I particularly like it because I uh, I believe it strengthens the regular season. I, I think there'll be you know with six weeks to go in the season, there'll be there'll be 40 schools that have a legitimate claim to one of those 12 spots, and, and with three weeks to go, there probably will be 20 teams that have a legitimate uh, claim to it. So. I think it'll be good for regular season TV. I think it'll be good for live game. I think it'll, it'll be good for college football. Um, having said that, uh, there there are uh, there are some headwinds. Uh, there are those who uh, believe that the, the process wasn't open enough, and that there weren't enough people involved in it from other conferences. Uh, there are those who believe that uh, there should be a, a model that has more than one uh, broadcaster involved. There are those that believe that uh, we shouldn't do anything preemptively, but instead should um, should make sure that we get to uh, an open market bidding situation uh, with the with a, a new contract. Um, so you know you, when you combine all of those things, um, I, I think that uh, uh, you, there are some headwinds. Having said that, I, I think it's a, a relative certainty that the. Uh, that the playoff will expand from four. Um, there are those who advocate for six or eight. Um, I, I believe the 12 team model is superior for uh, a, a lot of reasons that we don't have time to go into today. But uh, whether or not that will carry the day uh, remains to be seen. And uh, you know, I think if you if you go back to eight, then you're going to lose some, some support there from some people. And if you stay at 12, you're going to lose some support from other people. So, you know, again, it's, uh, we have a, a board of managers meeting the end of the month, and uh, we, it should be a little clearer by then, but uh, it, it certainly is not a, a fait accompli that, that it will sail right through. And, and, uh, but I think all of those things, uh, anything that creates enhanced and expanded access is, uh, is a good thing for, uh, for the autonomy leagues because we, we play at a high level and we have a chance to get more teams in. Up next, Andrea Eagleson from ESPN. Hi, Bob. Thanks for taking the time. I'm just curious, what is your sense of uh, more movement, 
specifically on the Power 5 level in terms of the way the collegiate landscape is going to shape? Uh, I wouldn't suggest that this is the last move we will make. Uh, I think we will look for uh, situations of opportunity when they present themselves. I, I wouldn't say we're, we're out looking to expand, but I, I wouldn't foreclose on the possibility either. Uh, relative to the, the shifting sands, I you know I think the I think the alliance is uh, too young to know just exactly what uh, impact it will have, but. You know, I think one of the things that the three conferences agreed to is that they, they weren't going to poach each other's members. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, uh, uh, if there is any uh, strategy beyond uh, taking OU in Texas uh, for the SEC. Uh, I don't uh, know if there are consolidation talks that, that might bear on it. Um, you know, some of the motivations that were previously there for conference realignment uh, most notably was capturing cable households um, in a declining uh, cable environment. Those sorts of motivations are, are not as uh, significant as they once were. And so, um, you know, who knows what the, what the next motivation may be. Uh, you know, we, we, may, we may encounter a time in the coming years when, when uh, a, a conference structure is a, is a bygone thing. There, there may be larger alignments that uh, get put together out of, out of necessity. And so, you know, it's a, I, I don't know, I've been at this almost 40 years and I don't know that I've seen a time that has uh, quite the tumult that we have right now. Uh, when you think about the lawsuits and you think about the Supreme Court being involved again and, and you think about name, image, and likeness and, and some of the, the uh, realignment, um, it's a, uh, there are a lot of moving parts, and uh, uh, four years is a, is a very long time, and, and I think we're just going to have to, we're going to have to keep reading the tea leaves and, uh, and move ahead and compete. I, it's, a, it's a great thing in my estimation that the football season came a week ago, because it kind of gets our minds off some of this other stuff that we've been dealing with, but it's, uh, um, it's, a, uh, it's a pretty crazy time right now. We have time for one final question for uh, Commissioner Bolton. Okay. Commissioner Mike Bianchi from the Orlando Sentinel again. Obviously, everybody here in Orlando very happy today, not so much in Tampa. I'm wondering, did, did you guys ever consider taking two teams from Florida? We, uh, th this was a very different process, Mike, than, than the last process. Um, I, I think our, our board was focused and I was focused on um, a small number of schools that we, we felt uh, would, would move the needle for us uh, in football first, but secondarily on a, on a broad basis. And uh, so, you know, we, uh, as I said earlier in response to a question, I, I wouldn't suggest that we're done because I think we will, uh, our board will want to um, keep, keep its eye on what's going on and, and uh, if there are uh, targets of opportunity, we would think about that. But we were pretty focused on on the four that we had, and uh, and those were the four that made application and, and were considered by the board. I want to thank Commissioner Bowlesby and Texas Tech President uh, Lawrence Skudnik for their time today. Thank you, gentlemen. We really appreciate it. We'll open up questions for both those online as well as here in person uh, for. President Cartwright and for Terry Mahajer, uh, please raise your hand, be identified here. We'll also recognize those online as well. But questions first here from uh, the room. Uh, for, for, for Terry or Alex, um, how much is it going to cost to get to the Big 12 by exit fees and entrance fees? Uh, the art. Our agreement right now, of course, with the AAC is, is a $10 million exit fee. Uh, and we, we have uh, to, to look at how uh, you know, long we'll pay that over the time. Um, so that's the main cost of actually uh, and going into the next week. That's our exit fee. That's it? Yeah. Is there an oh. the Big 12? Yeah, and then we pay an, uh, an escrow to go into the Big 12. How much is that? It's $2.5 Thank you.
a trace focal sense of UCF for both of you. You mentioned the journey uh, of the athletics program and your appreciation. Could you expand on that a little bit more? The appreciation you have for the students that have come before and the faculty, it, because it is a relatively short journey. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, it's what I meant. I mean, you, to be where we are today in such a short period of time is nothing short of remarkable. Uh, the mere ascent that we've had is outstanding. It has a lot to do with the resources, the donors, the student athletes, the type of coaches, the presidents. I mean, just like I said, it's 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 been it's been amazing to see. And I on an out, as an outsider, having worked in the state before, I watched it happen. I watched it from other states, and uh, it, but the time is right, and everybody knew uh, this program was ready to take that step. And one of the promises that I had, or I we decided when he hired me was we're going to we're going to make sure everybody knows that we're ready and we just have to focus on ourselves to continue to, to continue to tell the story all the great stories that we've had over the years and uh, put ourselves in the best light from online uh, barry trevell from the oklahoma barry yeah for uh for terry and, and maybe alexander um when you talk about putting yourself in position for this day, what was the key element there? You want to, okay. Is it the new? Is it having a stadium uh, as a quality stadium and built from the ground up? Is it is it winning? What what do you think were the key factors in, in being prepared for this day? It, it's a little bit of everything. It's all the elements combined. It's it's the it's the. Uh, the fan base, it's the, the university, the largest university in the United States. It's the competition uh, from all of our coaches, not just football. Um, I will, we will compete uh, immediately in the Big 12 uh, once we uh, are members. Um, so um, it's, it's the region, it's our donors, it's our fan base, it's a little bit of everything. And, and I think that we match up very well with some of the teams that are in autonomy conferences right now. As a matter of fact, I've been very vocal about, about that and uh, the, the market value that we have, not only here in this region, but also nationally. Yeah. The, the, the only thing I would add to that is actually, oops, sorry, our, our desire actually to just communicate the excellence that was already here. Uh, this is a fabulous institution. When I joined it, I realized that one of the things that we needed to do was make sure people understand who we are. Who is UCF? It's not just that, we are a large institution, but we have incredible, incredible academics, and we have incredible athletics here. And that message needed to get out, regardless of what happened with, with this activity here. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, Matt Marshall, the Orlando Sentinel. This is for Terry or, or, or Dr. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Alexander. Um, the question I have is, was there any discussion about maybe going into the Big 12 earlier, or was this decided Kind of did the Big 12 kind of maybe set the tone for that? We're, we're, always, we're open to any options. We're going to look at this. Uh, we just we just started this process, so we're going to look at the, um, the uh, where we are with our contract with the American, and we're open to any options right now. So you would consider trying to do sooner? Than All that. options are open right now. Thank you. Go back online. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Question? No, go ahead. Uh, question for Terry. Do we catch your expected sports 360? Uh, this is a fan base university that has demanded national respect. What does a move like this do for that question? Well, I think they already have national respect. They don't have to demand it. You earn it, and it's been earned. Today's action shows you you've earned it. We've earned it. That's simple, right? <laughs> yeah. Next up, back online, Jeff Sharon. Jeff, go ahead. Hey everybody, uh, Terry, congratulations and uh, congratulations to everybody for, uh, for the accomplishment today. Just a little housekeeping item for you, Terry. Uh, of course, the Big 12 sponsors every UCF sport except for men's soccer. So what's the plan for men's soccer going forward? Well, Scott Calabrese, I don't know if he's in the room today. Oh, I've already had a conversation with him, and uh, we are, we're working, we'll work on that immediately after, after the announcements. We've talked to him. He was one of the first coaches that I pulled into the office, or I guess I went to his office, to talk to him about it. He is 
and 50% supportive of this move, even though he knows that it might present a little challenges for him with conference affiliation. Uh, I'm hoping that the American will allow us to stay. Uh, they only have six members right now in their conference, uh, but I, I, with the success that he's had and his reputation and his leadership in the soccer uh, community, uh, I think we'll have a lot of options in my mind. Jeff Beal with WFTV here in Orlando. This question for Terry. You know, looking at the out of conference schedules for football games going forward, does joining the Big 12 have any impact on the games you already have on schedule? Specifically, I know folks around here want to know about the uh, University of Florida game when you guys recently scheduled. Yeah, it, it all depends on it all depends on what the uh, Big 12 new format's going to be when we join. Um, you know, they haven't ruled. We don't know whether it's going to be eight teams or nine teams. That would have a little bit of an impact. On that, um, you know, we don't have a lot of games after um, the 24-25 season, so um, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, but yeah, we've already started thinking about that. I mean, there was some, there was uh, one game came up in the last um, week and a half, um, and we put a hold on that just to see uh, what happens with this situation. So, yeah. <laughs> Andrew Adelson, ESPN. Andrew, go ahead. Terry, when you got the job at UCF, where on the priority list was getting UCF into uh, one of the autonomy conferences, and how surprised are you that it happened as quickly as it did? Well, I was making calls about the second day on the job, so uh, I'd say it's pretty uh, priority uh, just to find out what's with the landscape of what's going on. As we were trying to find a head football coach, I was also talking to people where we are. So um, I would say that, uh, I mean, guys, when I say I'm blessed and honored to be in here, there's no doubt being on the college football playoff and watching the teams um, the two years that I was on the playoff, this place was ready and poised to go to the highest levels and uh, there was no doubt that I was going to work tirelessly as much as I possibly could uh, to help uh, prove to people or earn uh, what so many people have already uh, established before I got here. So um, yeah, it was a big priority. Um, I think uh, from a resource standpoint of what we want to do and what I think we can believe in what I believe we can be, a top 10 program, without a doubt, in my mind, we need the resources. And finding the, uh, the autonomy type programs that have a better resources was, was paramount, and I think, in our, in our evolution of our program. Brandon Hellwood with Rivals.com. Uh, with UCF moving on to the Big 12, what is the status of the war of, on I-4 and games against the University of South Florida in football and beyond? Well, I mean, so, I'm, I've been very chronicled about regional matchups, and uh, since I've been here, we've we've we have contracted with three regional matchups: Florida Atlantic, Florida, and Bethune Cookman. I'm committed to continue with re regional matchups. Sometimes schedules don't align. I also would like to play Miami. I'd like to play Florida State. Um, will it happen every year? Probably not. But we definitely are committed to playing them as much as. I know our other sports will play them as well. We're committed to that as well. I have a question for Alex. Yeah. Jason they, have, they have schedule too. So, good. Sure. Jason Beatty with the Atlanta Sentinel again. Alex, even when you were you know, interviewing for this position many months ago, you talked about athletics being the front court yeah. of the university. Yeah. You know, obviously you didn't know what was going to happen here, but you know, what does this do for the university as a whole from an academic standpoint and the bigger picture, I guess? That, that's a great uh, question, and, and that's absolutely the case. What happens is that Athletics, of course, is what gives you the visibility. It's what allows people to notice that name, to recognize UCF, and try to understand what else is going on at that place, right? Uh, where are the place? This is a special institution. I can tell you, I've been here 17 months, and every day I learn more, and I'm more thankful to be the president of this institution. I'm fortunate to be here. What we need to do is make sure we get our message out there, and there's no better vehicle for that than athletics. The fact that we will have ads on major games that can be seen around the country, that matters to us academically. People will see what is coming out of UCF, and we need them then to realize that to be exceptional, when you're an exceptional institution, you decide you're going to be exceptional at everything. And athletics is one of those things. We're going to also be exceptional in our research, 
and everything that we do academically for our students and for this community. So this is a big deal for us, and, and I'm glad that we're able to be here today to make, make it happen. Thank you. Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Terry, just to clarify, you're saying you probably won't play USF every year? Well, I mean, they have a schedule now. I mean, they're, they're scheduled out. You've seen their future schedule. So, I mean, we, we can't get them to cancel games, but we'll definitely want to play them. That's not, a, it's not an issue. But I can't get them to cancel games. So, I mean, I think people, it's not like basketball. You schedule four or five years, six years, seven years out. We, we've, we're scheduling in, in the 30s right now to get games. And that's kind of where we are in the college college uh, football landscape. So yeah, we definitely want to play. I, we have proven that we want to play regional matchups. I do want to play Miami. I do want to play Florida State uh, as well. And so uh, we're, we're focused on it. Terry, yeah. also uh, as an AD, I'm sure you probably put pen to paper at some point or, or your staff has. What When you guys start getting the full allotment of Big 12 money, what is this going to mean financially for the program? And also, being a former football coach, what's it going to mean recruiting-wise? Well, you know, it's a, I, I, I still believe that your level is your state of mind. I don't, I don't change that. But the moniker does have cachet, okay, and all of recruiting. And uh, Power 5 moniker is important because that's used many, and our coaches talk to me about it a lot. Um, so uh, we're doing very well in recruiting in all of our sports regardless. Uh, I think this will help significantly. And um, so I feel really good about where, where we are. And from a, from a finance standpoint, uh, you know, it's going to take a while to figure out how we're going to, you know, some of the, as Dr. Cartwright said, the payment plan. And so it's not just going to be we're going to have this windfall of cash. And then, you know, all, all of a sudden, I mean, we've got, it's going to be a process. And we've got to figure out the aggregate. And that's what we have outstanding financial people on this campus. Uh, Gerald Hector, uh, Brad Strickling, uh, which is our CFO of, of the AA Athletic Association, uh, we'll, we'll continue to mine through that and navigate through that. But it's, it's good. It's good. Yes. It's like yeah. a race. <laughs> yes, we're getting a race. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trace Trump of Sons of UCF, leading up to today's announcement, what have your conversations been like with Commissioner Mike Oresco of the AAC? Um, I have not had a conversation with him this week. So that's all I can say. I sent a letter today uh, to all the memberships. And that was uh, what we did today. So to all the presidents and the athletic directors in the Carbon, the conference office. So. Matt Rochelle, the Orlando Sentinel. This is for, for Terry and Alex. Talk about a little bit of the timeline of how this all kind of came down. I know you talked about it was really fast, but was this something that maybe was, was kind of going on for the last couple of weeks before it kind of got to this point? Or was it, was it before then? Can you, can you talk a little bit about the timeline? Um, it's, it's been a few weeks. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it was, um, uh, I don't know how to really explain it, but you know, we, we, our strategy, and I presented a strategy to him probably about two months ago yeah. when uh, things started to break. Well, even before the Texas and Oklahoma left the Big 12, I had presented a strategy to them of, of uh, what we were trying to do and, and with the football campus or recruiting. Uh, just little uh, dripping that we continue to need to do uh, nationally, and um, just so happened that the, the, the gates opened up yeah. and we were there. So uh, uh, that's kind of the process. Yeah. Uh, what what I would add is that one of the things that I love about Terry is that Terry is always thinking about how we position ourselves to be in the best position possible, regardless of what's going on, right? And his vision of, of where we were headed as an institution. All of the, that vision wasn't tied to actually being in a, in a different conference. It was tied to what is best for UCF? How do we position ourselves nationally? How can we then continue to move forward and, and be the institution we want to be? And when I saw the, the plans for you know the football campus and all of these things, I remember saying to him, I said, we got to make sure the board actually sees this stuff, right? <laughs> is that this is exciting. This is what we should be doing. We should be doing things differently. That's what UCF does. Uh, so it was. It was just. It sometimes, you know, we, we say. Uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky, but you have to be prepared to get lucky, and we were prepared. Brandon Hillwood, Rivals.com. On a related note to that question, I guess it was about a week ago. Uh, it was the day of the Boise State game when the plan, I suppose, from the Big 12 started to get leaked. I think the Athletic and ESPN kind of said these were the four schools that they were going to focus in on. Is that when you 
found out? Like, can you kind of talk us through when you knew you were going to be part of this plan and kind of what you were, how you were informed and what your reaction was when you learned UCF would be included? Yeah, we, were, we knew before. <laughs> yeah, so and I'm going to add in what the president, he, he did a great job answering my questions. Just have him answer my questions. <laughs> uh, it's when, when luck meets, when, when, when uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And that's what this was. Um, and like I said, I cannot, and, and, and I called uh, Danny, and I called Todd Stansbury, I talked to George O'Leary, and um, I know the um, president reached out to some of his predecessors as well, um, just telling them this, this is your day as well. And, and when, when luck is when preparation meets opportunity, and we happen to be here. Terry, Ryan Walsh from WKMG here in Orlando. Yeah. Um, you're obviously an energetic guy. You feed up people's energy. If you had the opportunity right now to talk to the entire student population here at UCF, what would you tell them about today? I'll see you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. There you go, right? But beyond that, about the, the importance <laughs> You said. I answered your question, right? Yeah, well, yeah. So, we have volleyball tonight against Florida State at 7.30. So, there you go. Brad should be over there setting up. So, uh, so anyway, but uh, uh, but anyway, um, yeah. No, I mean, just you know, just they're part of the, they're part of it. They're part of it. They are. And uh, they are absolutely uh, the energy. They are the they are the soul and heartbeat of this campus. Um, and the energy that they bring, the love and passion that they have for this school, is what keeps us going every single day. Don't lose that passion. Don't lose that energy. Uh, it's been remarkable. I have I have walked this campus by myself with people just to talk to students, and it doesn't matter what you look like, where you're from, what your economic background is. It is amazing how many of our students, not affiliated with the athletics, how many of our students love this campus. Yes. Continue your love. It's going to grow. Our average age of our uh, alumni base is, what, 36, 38? And that is, it's getting younger. And you know what? It's because of our youthfulness, our boldness, uh, our mo the way we think, modern. Uh, and uh, so, you know, that's what it is. And I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> so. One last question. One last question. Trace Trucco, Sons of UCF, a few weeks ago you unveiled an announced facilities plan. Was that with today's announcement in mind, or how may today's announcement alter the timeline for those facilities? It really wasn't. It was, uh, it was really what we believe. And uh, we think, uh, I, I said, your level's a state of mind. I'll con you'll continue to hear me say that. It's what I believe that I think we need to be a top 10 program. And regardless whether which conference we're in, I still think we can believe it. I still believe we can do that. And the advent of the football campus allows us and is unique and it's, 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 a, it's different than any other college campus in the country. And uh, Coach Malzahn is doing a phenomenal job recruiting. He's, he's, he's battling some of the biggest brand names in the country right now and we're getting commitments along with our other coaches are doing a fantastic job without the moniker that we will have now. So um, just we'll continue to uh, charge on. Thanks everybody, we appreciate you coming out tonight.